What's going on, smart people? Initially, I wanted today's video to be on deriving Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared, which is actually only half of the equation, but much like how time and length can be contracted, so can people's attention, which is why that's the famous equation. But in order to do that, we have to introduce this relativistic factor gamma, which if you haven't seen before, would kind of seem like I'm pulling it out of my ass, and that doesn't really help anyone uh, in understanding that equation. So today is all about deriving that using nothing but Pythagorean theorem, and we're going to see how one of the consequences of this factor is time dilation itself. Let's get started. Let's consider a person who is on a ship, and they want to measure how long it takes for a photon to go from the bottom of the ship to the top. Okay, so that's, this is our ship. This is what ships look like. Everyone knows that. Here's our person. This is our person's watch, and then they have our little laser that's going to be shooting a photon straight up. Awesome. Uh, the distance that this little photon is traveling is going to be how fast it's traveling times the time it took it to do so, right? So this distance here is just c times t. Dimensionally, this works out. c has units of meters per second, and then time has units of seconds, so this whole thing has units of meters. So this is a distance. Awesome. Now, we're going to let this ship start moving with some velocity v, say. And if it's moving, we have to introduce something that it's moving relative to. So this, we'll call this reference frame, this clock, ticking at some time t. And then we're going to let it start moving now. So here's our person. And here's our little laser beam again. Let's divide this up. I think it'll be more clear if we do it this way. Here is it moving after some distance. So here he is again. Just watch and the laser, and then we're going to put a person in outside observer watching this happen. So here's our person. They look alike. Let's, add, let's make it a girl. Her name is Greg. We're so crazy. This is Allison. Well, Greg has a watch as well, and she wants to measure how long this whole event takes to happen as well, and she's going to be measuring some time. Let's call it T prime. But from her perspective, light is going to be traveling a longer path, right? Because she's not just going to be seeing it go up and down, because from her perspective, the ship is moving. So if it was just moving up, it would just keep going this way, but we know it's still going to hit the ship. So she's going to see the light tracing a path that looks something like this. And this distance is going to be some distance c t prime. Now, if time doesn't depend on your reference frame, then for the light to be going a farther distance in the same amount of time would have to mean that light is traveling faster than light, which is nonsense. So these two people won't be disagreeing on how fast light is. They'll be disagreeing on how long it took the event to happen, how long it took the photon to reach the top. And this is the premise behind time dilation. And the measurement on how much this time is stretched is given by this Lorentz factor, which we're about to get into. But let's go ahead and say that Greg observes the ship to be traveling at some speed v. So that's the speed of the ship itself. Now we have all that we need to construct a triangle. So if we blow up this triangle, this distance here is just going to be ct prime. This distance here is going to be ct. And then the final distance is going to be how far the ship itself has traveled. Uh, with respect to Greg's reference frame. So that's going to be some distance or some speed v t prime. Okay? And now we can just use Pythagorean theorem. So we get uh, c t prime squared is equal to c t squared plus v t prime squared. And now we can go ahead and just expand all of this stuff out. Let's write it over, write it over here. So we get c squared t prime squared is equal to c squared t squared plus v squared t prime squared. Okay, and let's get the t prime over. So this is going to be c squared t prime squared minus v squared t prime squared is equal to c squared t squared. And now we can factor out this t prime. So we get t prime squared times c squared minus v squared is equal to c squared t squared. Let's go ahead and divide by this factor of c squared. So we get t prime squared is equal to, oh, not equal to, 
t prime squared times c squared divided by c squared is 1 minus v squared over c squared is equal to t squared. And then let's just divide both sides by this factor here. So what we get is, and so let's divide by this factor and then take the square root. So we get that t prime is equal to t over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. And we have a special name for 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. That is defined to be this factor gamma, which is also known as the Lorentz factor. So at the end, this tells us that we can write t prime is equal to gamma times t. And what does that mean? Well, I think the best way to picture this is to actually maybe put in some numbers. So let's say that Greg observes the ship to be traveling at 90% the speed of light. So if we let v equal 0.9c, let's carry through with this calculation. So this tells us that t prime is equal to t divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared, so it's 0.81c squared, divided by c squared, so the c squareds cancel, which is equal to t over the square root of 1 minus 0.81, which is equal to t over the square root of 0.19, which is about 2.3t. And what this tells you is that what time dilation actually means in this respect is that Greg would observe Allison's watch to be ticking 2.3 times slower than hers. That's pretty crazy. And though this whole thing seems really bizarre, this is something that we have to account for on a daily basis. GPS that you use to get you from point A to point B has to calibrate itself to, to account for time dilation in order to keep you from crashing into a river and pulling a Michael Scott. So this isn't just physicists being wacky. I was more interested specifically in this gamma factor so that I can go through the derivation of E equals MC squared. But if you want to see more explanations on time dilation, there's a million of them out there. I'll try to leave a link in the description to a video that might be able to animate this stuff much better than I can that might help. In the comments section, I want you to tell me what you are studying and if you had to study something else, what would that be? And I'll see you guys there.